Hi and welcome everyone for the next presentation of this seminar. My name is Daniel Toshon, Equity Research Analyst at ABG, covering IT uh, services and technology stocks out of Stockholm. Uh, for this presentation, we have uh, CEO Henrik Ekelund uh, presenting the company BTS for us for some 20 minutes, and I will end the session with some Q&A. So go ahead, Henrik, and welcome. Thank you, Daniel, uh, and thank you everyone for listening in. It's a great pleasure for me to present BTS, a company I founded many years ago and still run as CEO. The big picture of BTS on the stock market, we came to the stock exchange 20 years ago, and the stock has uh, gone up 20 times during these 20 years, and also given a stable and good dividend. And we've done that by growing revenues on average per year 14% for 20 years, and profit even faster. So BTS is a company with rapid, steady growth and profit. And uh, I will explain to you what we do, how we achieve that growth, and why we think we're just in the beginning of a long growth journey. So BTS, we are a company in consulting and education. And uh, we typically come the step after McKinsey. Uh, or other consulting firms in the execution phase. And we, our vision is to become the global leader in turning strategy into action. Let me tell you a little bit about the company. We are about 2 billion Swedish krona. We're about 1,000 employees. Uh, we're spread around the world, and we work for the biggest companies on the planet, the most well-known names you have heard of. And to talk a little bit about our offering, so uh, the speed of change is very fast right now in the world of business. Every company's market is changing. Every company has a new strategy. And to make these strategies happen, which is critical to their success, the most important is to have a team of people who are aligned and working in the same direction and capable to make new strategies happen. And that is where BTS comes in. When a, strategy, when a company has decided to move in a new direction, with a new strategy, with a new initiative, and they want to mobilize everyone to move quickly in that direction, that is when BTS comes in. And as you can see on this slide, uh, the world is our market. We are not restricted to Sweden or the Nordics. Uh, Europe is about 25% of our business. The United States, about half, and the rest of the world, 25%. So we are selling in to big companies everywhere from China, Japan, Singapore, US, Spain, Australia. We're all over the world, and we can serve our clients, uh, global companies, uh, also globally. Um, I especially, specifically want to mention one growing client base. We've always worked for the big companies of the world, the Microsofts and the IBMs and so on. Uh, but we've seen in the last couple of years, we've won a lot of clients who are unicorns. So we currently work for 40 unicorns as well. And this is a very interesting and rapidly growing client base. Uh, and we have seven practices uh, seven different offerings. When I started the company, we had one practice. Today, we have seven practices. And this breadth is something our clients really, really appreciate. When they have a new strategy, a new initiative that they want to make happen, we can serve them with a whole breadth of offerings. And this also makes it possible for us to live for a long, long time with our clients. The average lifespan of one of our clients is seven years. We continue to do business with them for seven years on average, and many clients much longer than that, thanks to our breadth of services and also from, from the depth. We work from the top of the house through the whole organization. I also want to stress that even though we are in consulting and training, we're not a pure service company uh, where the whole balance sheet walks home um, every evening. We have a lot of IP. Uh, the way we built our success was to bring technology into consulting and training. 
We're the world leader in customizing business simulations. Um, in the same way, you know, as a pilot learns uh, to fly using a simulator, we train hundreds of thousands of leaders around the world using simulations. Uh, we're the best at that. That is our unique edge and why we uh, grow much faster than competition. Now, what this has also given us is a lot of intellectual property. We have hundreds of simulations. We have a lot of content. We have a lot of IP. So what we really sell is not a pure consulting. It is a combination of our IP and uh, our services. It is wonderful to have that combination. Uh, it means that we, um, we become unique to our clients, but we also um, have an opportunity to add pro in products and gain licenses. Now, let's talk a little bit about the financials. Uh, and I specifically want to highlight uh, that the pandemic was a turning point for us. In the pandemic, we switched the company from live sessions, from live training to virtual and digital very quickly. We kept every employee and we totally transformed the company into uh, virtual and digital. And because of that, 2021 is our best record year ever. And, and this is also true for Q3. Q3 is the best Q3 we ever uh, recorded. So even though the pandemic was very tough and, and challenging for us in the beginning, it uh, proved to be an opportunity to really transform the company to the next level. And in Q3, our result grew 90% over uh, nine months, 20%. And please remember, I'm not comparing with 2020. It would be way too easy to beat those numbers. I'm comparing with 2019. So very, very happy to see that 20. Um, 21 is another record year, the best we've ever produced. And you can see also here how our profit per quarter goes up year after year. You see the big, big, big dip in 2020 when the market hit us and we focused on the future. But you can also see in 2021 how we are beating 2019. And actually, the numbers are even better than these, um, uh, these chart shows because we are here suffering from the fact that uh, the corona is becoming stronger. So our improvement in dollars, in euros, in, in, in the real improvement is, is a, even stronger than what this chart shows. And our targets is 20% uh, growth per year, two-thirds of that organic and one-third acquired. And we're getting closer and closer to that growth number, particularly looking into 2021. And also our margin number, 15%. We set that goal five years ago, and we've been climbing year after year and getting closer to that 15% goal. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about our growth journey. Why are we growing year after year? Well, you see on this slide the four main reasons. First, we are in a growing market because companies are investing more and more in their people. We're in a fragmented market. There are many, many, many competitors, which means it's easier to take market share. And also it's global. We are not limited to winning business in the Nordics or the Northern Europe. We have the whole world as a market. That's reason number one. Reason number two is our strong competitive position. The idea of using simulations to learn and change instead of the traditional slideshow and listening and talking head, is an innovation that has built our company. And we continue to have this edge. And I would say, you know, that COVID has made us even stronger because the, the new virtual digital environment, we've moved faster than competition into this. So even though last year was really tough for us, uh, uh, to this year and looking forward, COVID has actually helped our business. Uh, the third reason why we are growing year after year after year is we put money into growing. Every year we invest in innovation, in digital solutions. We 
invest in marketing and sales and we invest in our talent. So we put resources into growing. And finally, fourthly, because we make acquisitions. Uh, that's the smaller part of our growth, but still important for us, both to drive our growth and strategically. And looking at some of the acquisitions here, you can see that we are acquiring roughly two companies a year on average of the last five, six years. Uh, we pick them very carefully. So there is a business synergy, either geographically or adding a new product to our portfolio. Uh, and we're buying smaller companies, typically three to 10 million euros, which means we can buy them with less competition and we can much quicker uh, grow their revenues and profit, making these acquisitions work very well for us. And we're happy that we have this very good acquisition track record. Recently, just uh, in um, Q3, we acquired NetMind, which is bringing us into the space of digital transformation, an enormous need in the marketplace. And we hope to use that acquisition to grow a lot uh, globally from this primarily Spanish-based uh, business. Uh, through the pandemic, we said, do, let's not waste a crisis. Let's not think short term. Let's use this crisis to come out stronger as a stronger business with a bigger customer base, with a stronger organization. And this is why, uh, by thinking long term, why we in 2021 is, is getting a new record year and we see record years coming in front of us. And we also, because of this positive development, we did raise the outlook uh, after the Q3 report. So instead of doing better than 2019, note, I'm not comparing with 2020, but with 2019, we're doing significantly better than 2019. And we're very, very happy about that. Uh, so really to summarize, we have a very strong position in a large, growing, fragmented global market. We have a long track record of growing and growing and growing both revenues and profits. Uh, these are the main shareholders. It's mainly entrepreneurial people in the company and uh, large uh, institutions that are with us. And with that uh, quick summary, uh, I uh, thank you. And let's see if Daniel might have any questions for me. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, Henrik. That's, uh, that's an excellent uh, Presentation of BTS. My first question is about the development in 2020. So extremely impressive transition from physical delivery to virtual and digital delivery. How, how, how much of a change was that for employees? And what do they think today of the delivery type? I mean, Daniel, that is a, a very good question. It was a huge change. We had a machine, an optimized machine that traveled the world and did physical deliveries everywhere. Uh, suddenly, we had to deliver outstanding programs uh, working over Zoom and working digitally, self-paced. It's a totally new medium. Uh, this is why we said, because we realized when this pandemic came, this will be the future. Uh, this is why we decided to keep every employee and in 2020, think long term and just move into this new world. Um, it has been a big change. Um, uh, some consultants love it. They don't have to travel. Mm. They can deliver their programs from home. Others miss uh, the fiscal connection. And we see, we hear from our clients that in the future, they want a mix. Yeah. They want both. Uh, so uh, in the future, it will be both uh, virtual and live. Yeah. When do you think we will be in the future? I guess today, 90% is probably virtual and digital yeah. delivery. Yeah. Um, when is the future? Is that in 22 or 23? And how do you think the mix will look like? Are we expecting 50-50 here? Or? You know, it's, it's, all, it's totally a question of um, the COVID vi virus mm. and when we can, uh, you know, uh, work normally. Mm. We've seen that every time that the COVID virus goes down, then people start to book live programs with us. Uh, so if we assume that in 2022, we get into a more normal situation uh, with a lot of vaccination, uh, then we would move into normal. That would be my guess. Uh, I believe we will get to a world of perhaps 60 uh, virtual, 40% uh, live. Yeah. Uh, there are many cost advantages, time advantages to do virtual. 
Uh, but in many situations, it's more effective also to meet. And I don't think we as human beings want to become just uh, live by Zoom. It'll be too boring. Uh, so uh, a 60-40 mix is our best guess. Yeah, I see. Uh, have you found an advantage where you can use your specialists across the globe at the same day, for example, so they can help a client in the US and in the afternoon in another country across the globe and they don't need to travel. Have you gained something from that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. This, this, um, uh, this new virtual world, mm. you can plan your resources mm. in a different way. Mm. And it's true, you can deliver a program to people in Rio de Janeiro, mm. you know, uh, in, 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 in the, um, in the uh, afternoon. But while it's in the morning, you're delivering something to people in Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's happening. It's, it's, yeah. it's a new, exciting world in many ways. Yeah. And in terms of the cost structure, I guess you have a, a lower cost delivery in the virtual world than the fiscal meetings. On the other hand, typically you charge your customers for your variable costs previously. So it has affected your sales negatively because you can't charge for travel yeah. expenses. Yeah. But I guess the margin has been slightly positively affected by lower cost delivery. How should we think about that going forward? Yeah. You know, um, yes, uh, we've gained on the margin. Mm. Um, mostly because some of our, our internal costs mm. uh, have disappeared. Um, and also a little bit lower revenue base to compare with mathematically, as you mm. said. But I don't see that as really important you know we've been on this margin growth trend for five years you know becoming like a half a percent to percent better every year um, and there are so many parameters to work on so i clearly see we will get to our 15 percent mm. um ebitda uh, you know in independently of of virtual or not yeah you are a very global company, a true global company with, if I can say, only 1,000 employees, yeah. more than 30 offices. Yeah. So on average, you are around 25 to 30 people yeah. in each office. Is that sufficient scale to reach the profitability you would like to have? I guess you are maybe three, four people in some of the smallest offices. Yeah. Are they able to deliver the 15 to 20 percent target to, con to contribute to the group, yeah. basically? I mean, we have, we have a bunch of offices around 60, 70. Yeah. We have a, bun, a number of offices around 10, 15, and then we have them around 30. Mm -hmm. uh, we see, actually, we can, we can get the same margin okay. in, uh, in different sizes. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that is not really a challenge for us. What, what, we, what we hope that we can see is, you know, we have a, uh, of the 1,000 people, we have quite a, a large proportion that is management, and R&D, you know, that are more fixed costs. So as we grow, uh, if we do it correctly, we can actually improve margin simply by growing also. Yeah. The scale effect. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I also have a question on the competition in the pandemic. I yeah. guess that when people actually worked from home and you did the virtual delivery, you could face new competition from pure software ed tech based companies yeah. and not the ones who historically actually physically met the customers. Have you seen that playing out? Are you facing more competition from pure ed tech companies today? Uh, in one of our practices, in the coaching practice, uh, there's a company called BetterUp that is uh, Silicon Valley uh, VC funded. Uh, they're very aggressive um, and um, uh, they're doing well. They're growing nicely, probably losing a lot of money. They can afford to do that. Mm. Um, but uh, these companies they typically go after the mass markets. Mm -hmm. um, and we, BTS, is more premium. It's this combination of consulting to tailor the solutions to what the company needs. And then we use our product IP base. So um, we, um, so far, we've been able to handle these ed tech players. They go for a different market segment than where we're in. Okay, I see. Um, and then the question of where you see the strongest momentum at the moment. You are big in North America, you have always been. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of geographies going forward, but also end sectors, the sectors and the uh, markets where you see the strongest demand, what do you see yeah. now? I mean, geographically, you can see that uh, in 2021, uh, North America has grown beautifully for us, you know, 20% or so. Mm -hmm. Europe and, and, uh, and most of the world has grown also nicely compared to 2019, but not as fast. Uh, we see uh, great momentum in all geographical markets going forward. Uh, in terms of sectors, um, 
you know, in the pandemic, we shifted. Uh, we focused on five sectors. So tech, pharma, biotech, consumer products, and financial services. Uh, industries that we saw were, you know, more stable and can continue to invest. Um, and that strategy in 2020 helped us then and is helping us now because these sectors are very strong also in 2021. So we do see that in tech, in pharma, in financial services, uh, demand is very, very positive. Okay, sounds, sounds promising. My final question is around the acquisition strategy here. You talked about NetMind. That was yeah. a really clear case with digital uh, teaching and learning. Uh, what else are you looking for in the acquisition market? <laughs> what should we expect in the coming years? One to two per year, but what types? I mean, what we've done is like one to two per year. And mm. we have three types of acquisitions. Mm. One is, you know, we acquire a capability product like NetMind that we don't have. Suddenly we can go to all our clients with more. The uh, second is we get into a market where we're not present. So Italy, Germany. Uh, we've done that the last couple of years and we will go into other geographies that way. Thirdly, what we did in the US um, of Jan 1 this year when we bought the company in Boston. So strengthening a geographic market. So any of those three, strong synergy, uh, big opportunities, uh, we will continue to make uh, these successful acquisitions as we go forward. Yeah, just to follow up on that one, I guess that these synergies are mainly cross-selling and growth synergies because you typically buy a group of really smart people with good customer relations, I guess. Y yes, and sometimes, you know, like in that mind, also a very nice IP. Yeah. Uh, but you're right, the synergy is really to, um, if it's like Italy, we go to all their clients with everything we have at BTS. If it's not mine, we take what they have and we go to our global client base. Uh, there are always, you can make some savings, you know, in the backside of finance and admin, but it's primarily a revenue, uh, revenue driven uh, synergy. You're absolutely right there, Daniel. Yeah. That was great. I think actually we have a minute left. So I, I will continue with one more question, oh, okay. which I think could be of interest from the Nordic investors here. W what activity do you see in the Nordics? Now it's like less than 5% of your business or yeah. something around that. But what do you see here? Which are your customers? Are they super active? Not yet active? What do you see here? You, you know, we've had a very good development <coughs> in, in, in Nordic. Um, uh, even during the pandemic, we were actually growing here. We have some, uh, some, some amazing, uh, uh, really big um, uh, global Swedish and Norwegian and Danish. Uh, also, yeah, Finnish from all four countries, uh, companies. Uh, so we've seen actually uh, 2020, 2021, our Nordic business has been growing okay. those two years. And we see that uh, Nordic companies are investing and uh, really moving forward in, in, uh, in a great way. So very, very promising. Sounds good. Sounds uh, like a positive and promising 2022 for, for the, the company. You know, uh, we, we're super happy over the record uh, 2021. And uh, for sure, we're, we, we, we want to continue like we've done for 20 years in the stock market, grow uh, revenue and profits next year. Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening in to BTS presentation with CEO Henrik Ekelund. And thank you very much, Henrik, for, for joining us today. Thank you, Daniel. It was a pleasure. And thank you for great questions. Thank, thank you, everyone.